Christian Broadcast Ministries presents CBM Worship. We invite you to worship with us as we praise and worship our Lord together through music, prayer, and God's Word. We bring you CBM Worship from the Sanctuary of the Wayside Temple, 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, Ohio. We pray you'll be blessed and encouraged as we worship our Lord together. to praise the Lord. Regardless of our circumstances, the song's teaching us a good lesson. We need to praise the Lord. But you know, as I was singing that, I was thinking, Lord, I know what it is to go through some things that are a little more difficult, but, but Lord, I, I'm just overwhelmed with praise. It's just blessing. Are you saved today? Come on. 
If you're saved, you have everlasting life. That's enough to make you dance in the street any old day. I don't care if the stock market's dropped to zero. It didn't, did it? I, I haven't looked lately. <laughs> hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but I'm saved. Are you a joint heir with Jesus Christ? Ooh, praise the Lord. We got to praise him today. I, I just got to, you start, stop, you just stop and start counting all those blessings. Food, clothing. You're a good-looking crew today. I mean, some of you look real good when you clean up real nice. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Tell you, if God, is God good or not? Amen. Amen. We have food and clothing and shelter and many good things. God's blessed our families. We have loved ones in heaven. We miss them. But we're going to meet again. Amen. Oh, yeah, we're going to shake hands in the land. We're all things brand new. Thank God for the hope we have in Christ. I'll tell you, you start thinking about the goodness of the Lord and you just got to praise him. Can you lift your worship as we pray together? Father, we just thank you for your goodness today. And as your word says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How marvelous. Lord, we praise you today. We just got to praise you and give you our thanks. Bring our sacrifice of thanksgiving and let you know, Lord, we appreciate all that you've done for us. Father, how could we praise you enough for so great salvation? Lord, you've delivered us from that lost condition. You have saved us by your marvelous grace. And Lord, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. How marvelous today. Lord, fill us with the joy of our salvation. We got to praise you, Lord, for saving us and Lord, for filling us with hope. This world's a troubled place. And Lord, it's falling apart, but we're not falling apart. Lord, we've got the victory in Jesus today. And we got to praise you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for all of your faithfulness in our circumstances. Yes, Lord, there's some valleys. And Lord, perhaps there's some things that we're working through today. And Lord, perhaps there'll be a new problem this week that we don't even see. It's not even on our radar. Doesn't matter, Lord. You're on the throne. You're our God, and you will work all things together for our good. Lord, we fix our eyes upon you today, Lord. You're the joy and rejoicing of our heart. You're our salvation. You're our life. Lord, you're our God today. You're our Redeemer, and we worship you and we praise you today. Now, Father, help us in all that we say and do in this place today to lift up and magnify that name that is above all other names. The name of your son, Jesus, we love him and we ask these favors in his blessed name and to your glory. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. It'll be all right. Yes. Is everybody smiling? Smiles required. No, no, don't look at me funny. Just smile. Amen. Now look at your neighbor and smile. Tell them you're glad that they're here today. Welcome them with a handshake if you're so inclined. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It is a joy to welcome you, and uh, we just love each one of you. Glad you can be a part of this service. Make yourself at home in the Lord. Worship freely. And uh, if you want to shout amen, it won't bother me. Amen. It'd probably bother me more if it gets too quiet. I like to hear good amens and uh, praise the Lord. And, you know, you get happy in Jesus. It's all right to celebrate him. You're in the house of God. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're going to lift our praise. The world might want us to be quiet. But we're too quiet anyway. You do know that, don't you? We're already on the quiet side. I mean, even churches that think they crank it up, they, they just stay still on the quiet side. Let me, let me tell you something. We got cause to lift our voices and praise the Lord. So don't be too quiet in the house of God. You're not going to bother me. And if you say amen loud enough, you'll wake up your neighbor. They'll get something out of the sermon when they're wide awake. This is good. Amen. Remember our call to prayer on Sunday evenings. We've been working on this for a while. And I hope that you take this to heart. Um, 
you've carved out the time. No excuses, please. We don't have a Sunday night service right now, but you can have one right in your living room. Read some scripture, pray with your family. If you're too busy to pray, what's, you know, you, 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 you don't, what, what, what? You're not concerned about the country? What? No, we all need to slow down and pray. And I don't care if you're a teenager or if you're an 80 year old, you need to be praying. And some of us can learn to pray better. In some sense, we can all learn to pray better. We're praying especially for our nation. America's in trouble today. She's in trouble. But it doesn't mean that uh, the story's over. It does mean that there better be some serious praying going on. And I don't know the mind of the Lord. Neither do you. He just told us to occupy till he comes. You can't occupy in the sense that Jesus is talking about when all you do is park yourself in front of a television set. That's not occupying. No, no, he, he's talking about you be about the Father's business. There's a place for a little bit of downtime, that kind of thing. He, he, God's given us plenty of that. He, but, but our problem is, is we're neglecting the weightier matters. Who did you speak to this week about their soul? Who did you invite to the house of God this week? Who did you pray for that's lost and undone without the Savior? I need to do better. You need to do better. We need revival in the visible church. And it starts with a genuine concern for a world that's lost. We don't, you know, we're so busy trying to save America. How about we save Junior across the street? And he's not going to come to know Jesus unless somebody teaches him the gospel. And so may the Lord stir us up. We're praying. And I, I want to encourage you to take that to heart and be of serious mind. You can carve out your own time, 6, 6, 37, 7, 38, doesn't matter. But make sure you're praying. I got to say one more big thank you. You know, our school's fiscal year ends on June 30. We kind of let the golf and walk donations come in. There's always a few that do come in in June. And we had several. And, and so just our final report on the spring golf and walk campaign this year, $36,998. And that's a pretty awesome campaign. And this uh, literally lets our school finish in the black and gets us started on a new year. This year will be year number 20. And uh, we're just staying faithful. There's new students coming. And you pray for the school. I know it's off the radar screen of most people most of the time. But I hope some of you will take, the, take it to heart and pray. God will meet the needs, not only materially, but there's always needs for, need for teachers and workers and, and, of course, the families. We're praying God will send us the families. There's a lot of families that need to be involved in Christian education. But we'll wait on the Lord to let, uh, you know, open their eyes a bit and uh, more on that another time. But can I just say a, a big thank you, you folks. I know there's some prayer warriors in here, and I know there's uh, most of you, if not all, you, you do what you can to help. And, Look at the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness. I learned this from Brother Shelby a long time ago. Long time ago. You got to walk by faith, not by sight. If you're going to do anything for God, you can't line it all up for the next 20 years. Say, oh, that, we're ready to go. Let's go. No, you start with nothing. Amen. Start with nothing. And nothing but a call of God. And when God puts it in your heart, you make his priorities your priorities, and he'll take care of adding the things you have need of. And uh, it's a walk of faith. Praise God. The Lord's helping us in every aspect. We give God praise. VBS registration is now full steam ahead. Forms are in the lobby. You see the, uh, you know, the decorations out there calling attention to everything. August 1 through 5th, rounding up as many three-year-olds up through completed sixth grade as we can. Those completed 7th and 8th this year, you're most welcome to assist in Bible school. Your help's needed. We need uh, lots of volunteers. Uh, so two things. Be a worker. Yesterday, uh, me and Brother Josh, we had an opportunity to invite several new fam families to the Bible school. And some of them intend to come. Praise the Lord. And uh, yeah, I hope you also had some conversations now we're, we're, you know, I know it's several weeks out, but you got to get it on people's radar. They got to start thinking, plan a little bit, and then you go back and, and remind them. And as we compel, the Lord will bless in a wonderful way. Now I don't know. I can't speak for you folks today. You forgive me, but I, I can't speak for. I, I'm not tired of serving the Lord. Amen. I'm just not. 
Now, my body is older, and it might not have the same energy it did when I was 30, but I'm not, my spirit, I'm not tired of serving the Lord. I'm not distracted from serving the Lord. And it concerns me that so many seem to be rather distracted. And I don't know, just what, does it make you feel tired when I just make an announcement asking you to invite somebody to Bible study? Does that tire you out? Man, get in a prayer closet this afternoon. Skip lunch, fast, and do some praying, and get yourself stirred up in the Lord Jesus. You're a servant of the Lord Jesus. Live it out. Come on. Don't be telling me you're too tired to do something for the Lord. He didn't put a burden on you. He doesn't expect you to do what you can't do. But every one of us needs to be a worker. These boys and girls, they need to hear the name of Jesus, and we got to go. So work with me. And uh, work with others, and let's enlist uh, children for Bible school. And um, we need volunteers to help us. Our next uh, VBS leadership le- VBS leadership team has a meeting tonight, five o'clock. Volunteers, if you can come and work with them, new uh, volunteers as well, come help us, and let's labor for the Lord. I encourage you to join them this evening as you're able. All right. Well, we're having some good lessons on Wednesday night. We have uh, some youth groups on Wednesday night, and uh, we're currently going through uh, some great chapters of the Bible. We just looked at Jeremiah 23 Wednesday night. It was a powerful lesson. I was enjoying it. You guys are missing out if you're not coming, if you're able to come. I know sometimes it just work schedules are very hectic, but um, don't neglect the house of God if you're able to be here. You should have your mind on coming and bringing somebody with you. Uh, do it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. This week, uh, we're going to visit Jonah chapter 1. Yes, sir. We've come to Brother Jonah's history. Oh, that'll be, that'll be an exciting little lesson. You, you, you ought to be here Wednesday night. All right, our team's coming. Right here in my hand is our, my offering. Anyway, my wife and I, we just love to worship the Lord in our giving. We've been doing it since the first week of our married life. And to my knowledge, never have missed a week. And I'm not saying that to call any attention to, uh, to our, ha- our, our, our habits per se, but I just love it. Uh, I just uh, uh, so bountifully, as the word says, the Lord keeps blessing. And, uh, you know, my priority is to lay up treasure in heaven. You know, I, I just love the good word of God. You need to be meditating in it. Live, live as you walk in the spirit. Let, let the Lord teach you how to live out your life. My wife and I, we've been laying up treasure in heaven for years. My treasure's not laid up here. You know, I was joking about the stock market. Stock market could go to zero tomorrow. It's practically meaningless to me. My treasure's not there. Mine's up there. And um, now I don't want to see the country have problems, and that's not a good thing if we have difficulties like that. But um, we need to make sure uh, we're following the lead of the Holy Spirit. I worship the Lord in my giving because I love him, <clears throat> because I believe his word. Laying up my treasure in heaven. That's real. And Brother Dan, that is eternal.
our prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, these psalms will lift your spirit. Am I saying it right? A lot of times these good little choruses and songs, they preach. 
I'm standing on his faithfulness. Amen. How about that word? I'm standing on his faithfulness. We all are. And uh, the Lord God is faithful. He will prove faithful through every situation. The word that he has given us. You know, we are living under a new covenant. And the Lord God has made this covenant. He sealed it with the blood of his own son. He will never alter the thing that's went out of his mouth. When God gives his word, he never breaks his word. Amen. I'm living my life standing on his faithfulness. Brother Al, what he has promised me in Christ, he will perform. That's why I'm saved now, and that's why I know I'll be saved tomorrow. Praise his name. Amen. Open your Bible to Romans chapter 10. We'll get there in a few minutes. Romans chapter 10, I'd like to read verses 12 through 15 and use the teaching found in verse 13 as the basis for this message. We quote Romans 10, 13 often. Well, today as we are examining the, the vocabulary of salvation, these powerful words in scripture, the word supplication, it has this deeper meaning of calling on the Lord. You're, you're really seeking God. You're pouring your heart out to him. And that's our thought today. We have this powerful promise. It's unchanging. God always keeps his word. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That's powerful and it will never change. Before we read the text and pray together, I need to remind you of a few things. First of all, everyone needs to be saved. Jesus used the word saved on numerous occasions. For example, he told the woman in Luke chapter 7, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Again, in John chapter 3, uh, in his conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus says to him, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. And he was even patient with his enemies. They were lost and they opposed him and fought against him, but he loved them. He cared about them. He was patient with his enemies whom he sought to bring to salvation during his public ministry. On one occasion, as he spoke at length with some of his enemies, he said, quote, these things I say that you might be saved. My friends, the Lord Jesus longed for those men to be saved. And may I say this? He longs for you to be saved. Yeah. It's not God's will that you would perish, my friend. He wants you to be saved. That's his heart. Christ cares about you today. And you need a revelation of his love, his concern, his care for you. Christ died for you. Christ bore your sins in his body on the tree. Christ took a cup. And he drank it. It was yours and mine. It was the cup of God's judgment. He experienced the wrath of God in our place. He has fully propitiated God. He has done that on your behalf. Christ died for you because Christ loves you. You might feel like there's not anyone anywhere that cares about you, but you need a revelation today. Jesus Christ is passionate about your soul. He loves you. He cares for you. It's his will that you not perish, but that you come to a place of repentance. He wants you saved. Again, Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And I pray that you'll understand this today. It's a simple point. I need to remind you of this. All men need to be saved. My grandchildren are coming of age. They're making professions of faith in Christ. We're joyous about that. But you know what? Little Lincoln, he'll be three in September. He's not of age yet, but he needs to be saved. When he comes to age, he'll need to be saved. Your children, your grandchildren, they need to be saved. Um, next, I want to remind you of this. I remind you, all men need to be saved because all men are lost. Amen. Sadly, all we like sheep have gone astray. We go astray from our mother's womb 
because we are fallen in Adam. By nature, we are sinners. This means our heart is alienated from God. Soon in our youth, we manifest all sorts of wrong behavior and it becomes obvious we are sinners. Remember this, we are not sinners because we sin. Rather, we sin because we are sinners. And that's not a play on words. That just speaks the truth. There is none good, no, not one. There's none that seek after God, not one. And before our conversion, before we came to Christ, before there was that turning point in our life, in our youth or in our adult life, when we had that salvation experience, all right, we were lost, but now we are saved by His grace. Uh, we need to be saved because we are sinners. We come in to this world naturally alienated from God. And when we come of age, at a young age, and we're conscious and aware, huh, we don't first choose God. We don't first choose Him. We're going astray. This is why we have to be so diligent with our children because they're going astray. They don't naturally have a heart that seeks God. Yeah. Left to themselves, there's no hope for them. They'll just come of age and drift on into the world. And who knows what will become of them, but they will ultimately die lost. They need a salvation experience. We have to diligently turn them to the Lord. And it's the power of the Word of God and the truth of the gospel that transforms our heart. I ask you today, if you're saved, and most of you are, why are you seated here today? Aren't you seated here today because the gospel of Jesus Christ changed your heart and life? Yeah. That's why I'm here. I met Christ as a boy in my youth, but it was real. And something happened in my heart that day a long time ago. I've never gotten over it. I don't believe you get over the new birth like you do the common code. I don't believe that for a second. I don't know what your theology is all about, but I'm telling you, when you're risen in Christ, my friends, old things have passed away and behold, all things become new. To be dead in trespasses and sins and then to be risen in Christ and to have the life of Christ, the Spirit of God residing in your heart, that changes everything. You say, well, I know a whole lot of people. I know a whole lot of people too, and they need to be born again. There's a lot of church folk that need to be born again. I, I better stick with my notes. I'll never get done. The Bible says those who are lost are dead in trespasses and sins. To be dead in trespass and sin means sin separates the lost from a right relationship with God. The only way to be raised to life, that is to be brought back into a right relationship with God, is to be saved. Now, I ask you folks that are watching, don't touch that dial, sit there, listen to me. Listen, are you saved? How about you Amen. that are seated? Are you saved? Amen. We need a salvation experience. Next, I must also say, no one desires to be saved until they realize they are lost. Many folks are going on their you know, happy-go-lucky way. As long as this temporal world's treating them pretty good, they don't have a care in the world, it seems like. And the thought of death, of course, they push that way back. They don't, they don't drag that out and think about that. But you see, folks are never going to seek the Lord. They're never going to see their need for salvation until they understand they are lost. Sometimes it's very difficult for a person to see their lost condition. The Apostle Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. If you have never seen your lost condition, that is, if you have never faced the reality that your sin separates you from God, you need your eyes open to the truth today. You must face your sin and, and your guilt in the sight of God. You must allow the Spirit of God to have His way with you. You must allow the Lord to bring you to a place of repentance. You must open your eyes to the saving work of the Lord Jesus on the cross. You must believe upon Him or you are lost. One more thing before we pray. 
If you die lost, you face eternal retribution. To die lost means both soul and body will perish in a place of everlasting conscious destruction from the presence of the Lord. My friend, it's time to call upon the name of the Lord while he is near. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for gathering us in this fellowship today around your word. We pray you'll quicken these truths to our heart. And Lord, speak to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl who needs their eyes open to the lost condition. Help them to see the need to be saved, to come to the foot of the cross where Christ has died for them. Lord, where there they can find your mercy. And Lord, there where you can lavish your grace upon them and forgive them of their sin and release them from their guilt. And Lord, raise them up to new life in Christ. Oh, Father, speak to our hearts today. Lord, I pray for that man, that woman that's watching right now, that, Lord, they, they've went through a lot of their life, but they've never seen their need to be saved. Perhaps they think of themselves as pretty good people, and perhaps they are as far as good characters concerned, but, Lord, they've never seen the reality that their sin has separated them from you, that they are so lost today apart from their faith in Christ. Oh, Lord, open our hearts, open our minds, help us to see today, and we'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you're looking at Romans uh, chapter 10 and just verses 12 through 15. The word says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek or the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That's a good word right there. God is rich to all, Jew and Gentile. There's not one ethnic group left out. We're all sons of Adam. We're all of the same blood. Christ has died for all men. And God is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever certainly means everyone. There's no limitation in that verse. You know, when God gives an invitation, it's authentic. He means what he says. He's transparent. He doesn't say whosoever and then not mean whosoever. He means whosoever. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? That's why we're here today. That's the foundational reason. Yeah, we need to feed the flock of God. We need to function as a local New Testament church. We need to interact with the body of Christ at large. Yes, sir. But what drives us? It's our marching orders. The head of the church, King Jesus, he says to you and I, go in all the world, preach the gospel to every man, woman, boy and girl. He says to go. Why? Because they can't believe in him of whom they have not heard. Aren't you glad somebody told you about Jesus? I'm so glad. I'm so glad that somebody told me about Jesus. The first influence in my life, mom and dad hadn't come to Christ yet, but dad, first influence in my life as far as the gospel would have been Mamo Yost. No question about it. As a little boy, she took her grandchildren to church. She couldn't drive. Neighbor picked her up or one of the family drove. But she packed the back of more than one station wagon and off we'd go to the top of the hill where the little church was at. That was my first church experience. Mamma loved her family. She prayed for them. She interceded for them. And I have no doubt that uh, her labors for the Lord is the primary reason my dad is saved. My Uncle Dennis is saved. 
Uncle Mallory was saved. Uncle Ray, who's in heaven, was saved. And her, a lot of her grandchildren came to know Christ. She cared. She was a woman of prayer. She loved to witness. She taught us, helped us, sold the seed, took us to church. I have fond memories of her praising. Praising the Lord. Just like yesterday. Eight-year-old boy, seven-year-old boy, ever how old I was, sitting in an adult service. And these ladies, they got their hankies out like this right here. Next thing you know. I thought, what? What's going on? Something the preacher's saying, stirring their heart. Well, I was just learning. You see, you got to learn. You, you can be around. You can be listening, but you're not really hearing yet. You hear, but you're not hearing it yet. You're not comprehending it yet. But you got to have that seed sown. First Bible I ever looked at was in that little church house. And I still remember Sunday school, opening this Bible, gave me a Bible. Print was smaller than this. I mean, I was just a young kid, had good eyesight then. I had to bring it up here to see it. I mean, but I, I thought, well, this, and they're teaching, started hearing. And then mom and dad moved here to Ohio. We resided in Bellevue, Ohio at the time. My brothers were not born. And you know, Mamma would come up and stay with us. <laughs> she had to go to church. Kids were still lost, still needed Jesus. She needed to go to church. She found her little church. I don't know if dad, mom had to take her. Somebody had to take her. But you know, she went to church. Next thing, next thing you know, she's letting the preacher know that family needs to be saved. Guess who came knocking on the door? That's right, isn't it, Dad? Next thing you know, you know, it's Mamaw, but the preacher, God used him. Mom and Dad went to church. You can't sit under the gospel very long. You're either going to get in or you're going to get out. You're going to get saved or something's going to give. And Mom and Dad, well, Dad dedicated his life to Christ, and that Sunday when he came forward, that's when I made my decision of Christ. Mom did the same, gave her heart to the Lord. Uh, I still remember when Mom was baptized. I think, I don't know, was I baptized the same day? I can't remember if we baptized the same day or not. But um, I still remember coming out of the baptistry and out after church with her head wrapped up in a towel. I remember that. <laughs> I don't guess, ladies, the hair dryers were that prominent back then. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you something. You can't get saved unless you hear. Amen. How can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Aren't you glad somebody taught you about Jesus? Amen. And that's why we're here today. We continually preach and teach the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've got good news for you today. You may not be saved, but in a few minutes you can be saved if you'll call upon his name. Well, that all wasn't in the notes, but we'll just mind the Lord. And so the Bible promises, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. There needs to be a time in your life. Listen to this. There needs to be a time in your life when you are desperate for the Lord. Does that sound awkward? Desperate for the Lord? What's that mean? When you see your lost condition, you'll be desperate for the Lord. Amen. And that can happen when you're younger and older and you don't have to have a, you know, a great deal of knowledge of Scripture to be the witness of the Spirit in your heart that, boy, I am lost and my sin has grieved God and I'm away from God and Christ died for me so that I could be forgiven. And you see, the Spirit of God, He convicts the world of the sin of unbelief. That's his primary job, according to Jesus, John chapter 16. And that sin of unbelief is the sin of unbelief in Jesus. The Spirit's work is to bring you to the feet of Jesus. And when he's doing that work, you know, you'll, you'll experience that. Can some of you relate to what I'm saying? If you're with me, say amen. amen. You experienced some sense of desperation. You say, boy, I'm lost. I got to be saved. I need to be saved. And you might not have knew how to be saved, but you knew you needed to be saved. And then there was somebody to guide you and somebody to help you. 
Such was the case of a man who lived in the city of Philippi. He worked in the city as a jailer. No doubt he saw many hardened criminals thrown into jail. It was no surprise to him when one evening the magistrates of the city brought two prisoners with the charge to keep them safely. He did notice, however, that the magistrates had beat these men. He wondered, perhaps, why they had been beaten. Perhaps he wondered what their crime was. Regardless, they were his responsibility. And so he thrust them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks of the prison. But at midnight, these two men <laughs> began to have a prayer meeting. The Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Now, I just have a sneaking suspicion that Paul was not a backward Christian. I don't know why I get that impression. Uh, but I don't think he was shy about worshiping the Lord. I don't think he was shy about preaching Jesus. Uh, he knew something about uh, the help of the Holy Spirit. But him and Silas, they begin to pray. And the Bible says, and they sang praises unto God. So they're praying, they're worshiping, they're singing praises to God at midnight. And I don't think they cared who heard them. I don't, I don't think they were worried about any other prison. Besides, they were in the innermost prison. You think that jailer might have heard? I don't know. He was sleeping. But they were worshiping the Lord. The Bible does say that the prisoners heard them. Now, I don't know how long they prayed and how long they sang. But heaven was listening. <laughs> Amen. I mean, the Lord came down and the Bible says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and every man's, all those bands, those stocks that were holding, they just fell off. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. You know why? Because he was as good as a dead man anyway. Paul knew the situation. He put two and two together and he cried with a loud voice, wanted to make sure the man could hear him. Do thyself no harm. We're all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. They ain't nobody going to say that unless they're under Holy Ghost conviction. And that's exactly what we need in this old sin-cursed world of ours today. It's what we need in our churches, be it Wayside Temple or First Church down the street. You name it. Our churches need the old-fashioned convicting work of the Holy Ghost. My friends, we need to experience the Spirit of God again. You can't be saved without the work of the Spirit. This man comes in and he's trembling. Sirs, by the way, he knew who to ask the question to, didn't he? <laughs> I mean, there's something that's been percolating in this man's heart somewhere along the line. But he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul would proceed to speak the word, him and Silas would speak the word to this man and to his house. But he gave him the simple answer. He didn't need a half hour sermon. He said, believe. On the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad it's that simple today. I'm glad that the work of the Spirit is real. Preachers can labor on uh, till the end of time. We can't convince. We can't open your eyes. We can't say it just right. We can't preach it clear enough. But the Holy Spirit can open your heart. He can show you Christ and Him crucified. And I'm telling you, this word is sufficient for you today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can die on that today. Oh, yes, you can. Amen. Well, there's no doubt that the jailer's heart was changed. And he knew what salvation was all about before the sun came up that morning. 
That same night, he was baptized in all of his house. Amen. The apostles didn't wait around for any special occasion. They said, you believed on Christ? We need to baptize you. He was ready and willing. This is a powerful example of a man who realized he was lost. And when he fully realized he was lost, he was ready to be saved. What must I do? Are you ready to be saved? I pray God's spirit will open your heart today. And if you will believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Bow your head right there where you're at and call upon him. Just say it. You may never be able to come to a church house, but you can call on the Lord where you're at. I'm going to ask our team to come. And uh, as they're coming, I want to tell you one more story. And uh, listen well. I love this little experience. Jesus was coming to Jericho. And the Bible says, as they came to Jericho, listen. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Bar Bartimaeus, quiet down, son. But he cried the more. And a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Get this picture. Bartimaeus is calling on the Lord. Well, the crowd's moving. Jesus is moving. But he could hear him. And he persisted in calling on Jesus. And then the Bible says this, and this just touches my heart. <laughs> and Jesus stood still. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, he heard that man calling on his name. And he could not and he would not. Just keep on walking. When you call on the Lord, you have his undivided attention. He stood still and he commanded that they would call for Bartimaeus and bring him. And when he came to Jesus, the Bible says they told him, be of good comfort, rise. He calls for thee and he cast away his garment. He rose and he came to Jesus, and Jesus said to him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? <laughs> the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. My faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. And follow Jesus in the way. <laughs> Can I tell you today that if you will call upon the name of the Lord, that he is near all those who call upon his name. When you call upon his name, he'll stand still for you. I called on his name, Brother Clayton, and he saved me. That's right. Brother Tony, I called on his name and the Lord Jesus stood still and said, Russ is calling on me. Amen. You called on the Lord and he saved you. And I've got good news for you today. Christ will not pass you by. When you call upon him, he will save you. Amen. In this case, he healed this man and he could see. But you know, Bartimaeus, he had something a faith in his heart because when he called on Jesus, he knew who he was. You can't just read over things in the Bible. Just slow up and meditate on it. I mean, Brad, he said, Jesus, thou son of David. <laughs> he knew Christ was the Messiah. But Christ did something for him when he healed his body and gave him his sight. But when we called on his name, 
he did something very special for us. Like the old song says, I once was blind, but now I see. Brother Herman, we're seeing people today. Praise the Lord. We're not in darkness. We're in the light. And all because we called upon the name of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Our team's going to lead us in worship. And I want you to think about your relationship to the Lord today. Are you saved? And if you don't know him today, it's time to call upon his name. Sure and steady, my hope is held in your hand. When castles crumble and breath is fleeting, upon this rock I will stand. Upon this rock I will stand. Glory, we have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise the anthem, our loudest praises ring, we crown him Lord of all. It has been a blessing for us to worship together at this time, and we invite you to come worship with us. CBM is located 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, easily accessible from State Route 2. Take Route 2 to State Route 101 South and turn left onto Maple Avenue. We would love to have you visit. And don't forget, it's your prayers and gifts of love that bring this program into your home each week. Send your gifts of support, prayer requests, and comments to CBM, Box 247, Castalia, Ohio, 44824. CBM Worship is a production and presentation of Christian Broadcasting Ministries. CBM, proclaiming the word.